How's it going, guys? This is Forensic Forks Deontay, and I'm back with another video. This is your daily update on Australian dollar versus Japanese yen. As you can see today here on Tuesday, we got to our designated goal of that swing high here with this buy side liquidity above it, and also that final target of the if the look back data range pool 60 day high. So it feels good, obviously, to get it right to see this to show you guys how I'm able to read price action in a very simplistic way. It's not that I'm using anything over extensive, you know, or I'm over analyzing. It's very small, subtle things that I'm just looking at. And I'm not really expecting the most out of it, but I am expecting price to follow certain fundamentals and how the market's actually supposed to price in where it's going to go. As before, we said that price drops below the monthly opening price. And look at where we are today. Very overbrought. We talked about how in the previous episode, how you should be cautious in chasing longs at this point. Because eventually, like any other candle on any other time frame, a high is going to be set in. And for the monthly chart, the high of the month will come in sooner or later, especially after taking out a large liquidity pool. So we just took out the 60-day look back high. So from the last 60 days or 60 bars from the beginning of the month, we had liquidity pools that were available to us. And we can see how this month trades right up into it perfectly. And out of all the spots that it gave a strong reaction off of, it had to be the 60-day IPTA level. Very interesting, right? I know. When I see this stuff myself, even to this day, I've been using this ideology and methodology for the last three years. Sometimes the things that it does is just so unfathomable. All in all, though, we can see that we were correct in calling yen lower and other fiat currencies against Japanese yen was going to appreciate while Japanese yen was depreciating. So if you were with me from the start, or if you were with me within you know any moment of this month of the daily tracking, you can see how price respected certain areas and how we were able to read it in very simplistic terms, waiting for a higher swing low and then buying. So we said that bullish trend formula started here. Yes, we had that false break. We talked about it. But here's when it started. Break a swing high, wait for a higher swing low. One, two, three. After that higher swing low is set in, you could look to be a buyer. And at any point, you're simply going to be looking to buy at a discounted area inside that intraday. So buying below midnight opening price, buying below the weekly opening price, buying below the kill zones opening price, and so on and so forth. You just want to be buying once counterparty liquidity pool is taking. So on each one of these days here, after this higher swing low is formed, one, two, three, these next couple of days, you would be possibly looking for sell side to be rated and then price going higher and respecting the sell side and not wanting to raid sell side again. You want to see it raid sell side and run away from it. That's the whole point of a trending environment. You're using counterparty liquidity pools to justify where price is going to go. Sell side liquidity is going to justify price going higher after it's been rated and vice versa. In a bearish condition or a bearish trending month, you'll be using counterparty, which is buy side liquidity, and looking for buy side to be ran out and liquidated and in price to continue going short, respecting that raid. All in all, you can see at this point, I would not do too much at this point, in my honest opinion. I've made substantial amounts of money taking a couple of swing trades. I would not sit here and try and gamble and try and predict if the yen crosses are going to go any higher. They can. But at this point, I would like to play it cool. I would just like to read the price action moving forward. Very simple. If it's going to continue trending higher, let's see the next couple of days if it's going to unfold bullish. And at this point too, is there any other liquidity pools that we have outside of this range that is still available? Odds are we do have some, and we can see right here. So just mark this one out. So this has to be some type of weekly swing high. And we'll make this red. So hopefully this answers the questions to those that say, what do I do after all the liquidity pools have been taken and the market's been trending? Do I just stop trading altogether? Not necessarily, but I would take the assumption or the stance that while price was trending throughout this month, you was taking opportunities along the lines of finding the trend and using IPTA to help you, plus seasonal data, plus macro data, talking about interest rate differentials. We talked about this from the beginning. At the beginning of every daily tracking of a new month, 
I talk about all the fundamentals or technicals or macros that I use. And we talked about how Japanese yen has a negative rate. Australian dollar or RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, has a positive rate. And the fact that the BOJ, Bank of Japan, has a negative rate and they had a huge interest differential, I figured more than likely Australian dollar was going to appreciate over the month of February. Seasonally, too, I believe seasonally Australian dollar was bullish. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. And seasonally, Japanese yen was bearish. So these definitely played out as well. You can see as well, and I'm saying a lot of as wells, but UJ, still stalling inside this PDA right here. We got a down close candle. Price is probably going to look to either push higher or could there be a change in trend, right? This large candle up, for those that are a little more versed in Larry Williams' ideology and methodology, this is a smash day candle. So if price were to get back down to that low here, that could be a turning point for UJ. And it's going to catch a lot of traders off guard because that large candle up looks bullish. Quote, quotation marks, looks bullish. But do we really know if it's bullish or not? Not necessarily. Unless we really get that higher swing low and then price continues to trend higher. Even if we do get higher swing lows, doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. I want people to understand the formula can still fail. The market may do something completely different to what we expected. Even though it did print a higher swing low, it's not confirmed here, but it can still continue to go lower and then make a lower swing high and lower swing low. And then maybe a bearish trend is going to unfold or the market's going to accumulate and start stalling before another leg higher or vice versa. Price comes up, stalls, and then new trend is unfolding. And then we get back down and we take out all the sell side that we created on the way up. So you start to see how you got certain market maker conditions that are being built or market maker models that are being built in for later future price action to target. So all the sell side that it's making here can be targeted back on the downside as well. So things you got to be slowly versed in and informed about. NJ hit that weekly swing high I had marked off in the previous episode. You see right here. Weekly swing high, rated. And then you got clean highs up here too. Cad J, still playing the full. <laughs> still hasn't gone higher. But if it breaks any swing low formation, the formula starts all over again. This is where the formula started for me. After getting those false breaks, there goes the formula, right? Breaks the swing high. It technically started here. Started right here. Breaks the swing high here. And then the higher swing low forms. And then the same thing repeats. Breaks another swing high here with a fair value gap too. Higher swing low forms. And the price continues going higher. But if price breaks any swing low, that is my stance to be on guard or to be cautious and say, hmm, is this bearish momentum now? Because when the swing highs are broken, that's bullish momentum. That's how I like to define it. Some people may disagree, but I like to do it the way I like to do it and speak on it. Swing high broken is bullish momentum. Swing low broken is bearish momentum. And that is all I need to start comprehending and start putting the pieces together on following trend. There are going to be little subtle differences across the end crosses, but they all generally will do the same thing. And if one is showing other signs, let's say four are in line, but one is off, that means something might be underlying and something may occur. For, for instance, EJ is going higher. Down close candle. We talked about that yesterday too. Got a down close candle. Look to buy after it. This is a very good indication. Today, you could have made potential profit on buying in the next day. But people aren't, you know, aware or informed about it. But I'm going to do my best to keep informing people about that. This is a counter trend day. Look at all the days here. After getting that higher swing low, down day, buys. Small to large. Down day, small, and now it's trying to push into a large range cycle. Daily candle is about to finish forming in literally 30 seconds. GJ, same thing. Down day, look how it's trying to push up, trying to get to the buy side. Not saying it will, but it's a possibility. We're just using statistical data and things we've seen through hindsight to help us project future price action. That's all we're doing, trying to replicate and reproduce what we've seen happen in the past 
and take advantage and execute on it. Here you can see Swiss J. Swiss Franc versus Japanese Yen. Still stalling. Very interesting. Small range cycle too. The fact that this one pair hasn't started to outpace Japanese Yen kind of puts me on edge as well because all the other Yen crosses are going up. But Swiss J is just like holding back. And I want to know whether or not if it's already gearing up to start a new trend lower. Unless we get a rate up and then it finally drops down. So hopefully you found this insightful. Moving forward, we'll just track it day by day. I'm not really expecting too much, but I'll still give my input and thoughts on it. I'd like to see if price is going to fill in this wick here. So it gave up a lot of gains today. See the candle just finished closing. So let's see if tomorrow, if it would come up and try and fill this back in and potentially get back to the previous daily high. But if it were to make a swing low formation in the near future, so something like this, a swing low, and in price, you know, creates a swing high and it comes down. So this would be a false break again. Here we go. So then the whole pattern restarts. What is that? Your classic ICT breaker idea. Or it fails, right? Price can fail. Price comes up, makes a high, makes a swing high, and then fails to break that swing high, makes a lower swing high. You got your breaker. Trades into it, goes lower. So hopefully you found this insightful. And as you can see, the IPTA once again is showing its true self. It's not always going to be perfect every single month, but it does give me context to where sensitive price levels will be residing. We ran off of the 60-day low here, owed 60-day low, hit that here. Ran all the way up, 20-day high here, target that. Never got any return back to it thus far in current price, but then we ran right back into 60-day high. Peace.